Okay. You're you on. You good now? Okay. For the, for the purposes of the camera today, I'm representing Arizonans for Healthcare Freedom. Okay. And by the very day, you can tell what we're talking about. How many of you, just, just by a show of hands, because I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get a few of you in here, how many of you are in favor of Obamacare? Just raise your hands. Everybody, yeah, stand up. Okay. Good. We're, on, we're at a good start. And who do we have? Who do we owe our thanks to for passing Obamacare? I'll give you a hint. She's the congresswoman from the district. <laughs> Very good. So with those two things in mind, the Arizonans for Healthcare Freedom, two years ago in 2008, they tried to uh, introduce this proposition that would basically say you as an Arizonan cannot be mandated by the government to purchase health care insurance, nor can you be limited to be a self-payer. It got, it got defeated in 2008 because it, was pretty, it wasn't very well funded and they didn't have the great warning to be able to put forth. This year, we've come back around and with all the things going on in our country, needless to say, it's well funded. And let me tell you what happened last week in Missouri. Missouri passed Proposition C. Same wording, same ideal, they passed it it's by 73%. All right. What's happening across our country is all eyes are now going to be focused on Arizona. Not only do we initiate SB 1070, but it's good to see Arizona is leading the way in these things. But they're also going to be looking at Proposition 106. If we pass it in Arizona, there are 20 states that are right behind us waiting in line. Okay, so here's the two basics for Proposition 6 and why you want to vote yes on it. Number one is all Arizonans have the right to not participate in mandated health care insurance. That's number one. Number two is you cannot be penalized, taxed, or fined if you become a self-payer. Let me give you an example. On some of our insurance policies, to get a second opinion, you'd have to pay out of pocket. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Now, right now, as Obamacare stands in 2014, you can be fined for doing that. If they pass Prop 106, you cannot be fined as an Arizona. Okay? Never before in our country, in the history of our country, has the government created an entity and mandated you participate in it. And this is a very slippery slope. When people were talking about health care in our country, think about this. If the government owns GM, Think about the slippery slope here. And all of a sudden, you start getting mandated, you need to purchase a GM car every two years. Okay? It is a slippery slope. So here's what I want you to do. One very important thing. I want you to grab as many of these brochures. I want you to tell as many of your friends, your family, your neighbors, and people all across Arizona, vote yes on Proposition 106. The wording is very simple. It does not. It does not affect access, does not affect Medicare, does not affect veterans' benefits. It simply says you have the right to not be fined, penalized, or taxed for not having health care insurance. That's what it says. And now let me tell you who's opposed to it. Who's making a stand against it? AARP. Take a wild guess. Take a wild guess why that would happen. Okay. So that's what you need to know. Vote yes on Proposition 106. Thank you very much for your time. Kathy wanted me to make myself available to answer political questions from around the state. I've been traveling around the state, so i got to get a heads up on some of the races that are going on, some of the things that are happening politically. So if you guys have any questions you want to ask, let her rip. Yes, ma'am. What will happen when it's passed? What will happen to Proposition 106? Well, what will happen to the country and uh, the health care bill? Well, here's what's going to happen. Here's, as far as Obamacare, all those kinds of things, that's what you're worried about. Yeah. Right now, you have, you have 13 states' attorneys generals that have filed suit just this week. Mm -hmm. Okay, So we are in for a Supreme Court battle. Oh, okay. That's, okay? Number that's number one. Number two is we are hoping to switch the tide here in Congress. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We switched the tide here, and the first thing I think is going to be on the docket for every, not only the freshmen, but also incumbent Republicans is to defund the health care bill. Okay? That's, that's the two things. And then eventually, 
God willing, we'll take back the White House. And at that point, we will repeal the whole thing. That is the plan. That's how everybody's doing it. So. Make sense? But we do have some major Supreme Court battles on the horizon, which will, will really bring up the whole idea of states' rights in the Tenth Amendment. And that's really what's going to be happening. 1070 has initiated that. Proposition 106 is going to be expanding upon that. Any other questions? Um, yes, ma'am. What, what's your feeling on the attorney general race? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what my opinion is on it. What's my opinion on it? Well, give us some good news. Give me some good news. Um, well, needless to say, that was the ugliest battle across the entire state. What was the question? Oh, she's asking what are feelings on the attorney general's race oh, okay. in the state. Um, and as I said, that that was one of the most ugly battles. And the winner won by a very small margin in the primary. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see if they can rally around Tom. Um, uh, I've met them both personally, both nice guys. Um, I'm of the opinion we need to have a Republican in the Attorney General's, particularly with all these states' rights. And we saw from Terry Goddard that he wasn't stopping the federal government from suing our own state. We've got to change that. We have got to change that. Yes, ma'am. I just read in the paper this morning they're talking about that. Uh, is it an amendment to change Secretary of State to Lieutenant Governor? Um, yeah, um, there's some, there's, yeah, there's some, she's asking, there's a, there's a lot of talk right now of taking the term Secretary of State and turning it into Lieutenant Governor. Uh, the one thing it is not doing is it's not creating an additional position. It simply is taking the person who was in the Secretary of State and calling them the Lieutenant General. But then Lieutenant expecting Governor. them to be the same party. They would be one of the same. Yeah, they'd be one in the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it's pretty common across most states. Yeah, yeah. We're one of the few states that doesn't have a lieutenant yeah. governor. So, so you think there's a good chance? For there's that a very good that. strong chance for that. Well, yeah. Have but then would they be necessarily always from the same party? Yeah. Uh, typically, yes. Yeah. 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 So that's why it's not a good idea because right now you can. Yeah, you can have, have a you can have secretary of state who's not. So there will be there's some heated uh, contention. That will be a state issue. They will. Um, I'm not even sure if that's going to go to the voters' clerk. Do you know that? I'm not even sure that issue would even go to the voters. I think that would be dealt with in the state house. Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah, and they'd have to put it on a, on a constitutional amendment later. Yeah, that's what I thought. And they need two thirds of the yeah. of the representatives to vote on that. So that's been brought up for years, and it always sputters and runs out of gas. Yeah, I think the only reason it's 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 taken on a little bit of, of intensity right now is because we have a Republican House. A Republican governor, a Republican secretary of state. If it was uh, Napolitano right now, we'd all be fighting tooth and nail against him. Uh -huh. So that's the only reason it's taking on some steam right now. Uh -huh. 